In this presentation, you will learn how standing waves are created. You will learn how to identify the two parts of a standing wave and explain how they are created. I will teach you how to find the wavelength of a standing wave when you know its length. Standing waves are waves produced when two waves with the same frequency and wavelength travel in opposite directions in the same medium. The dotted waves represent the two waves that make up the standing wave. They are called standing waves because the resultant wave appears as if it's neither moving to the left or the right. Musical instruments create these kinds of waves. There are two major parts to this standing wave. The eight large regions that move up and down are called the antinodes. In between each antinode is a part of the wave that doesn't move called the node. The antinodes are regions of maximum energy and are created by constructive interference of the red and the blue wave that make up the standing wave. Look carefully at the nodes. Nodes are the place in the standing wave that has the minimum energy. Nodes are produced by destructive interference. Some standing waves are created by a single source. The standing wave you see is created when the wave created by the student on the right meets the wave that reflects off the hand of the teacher on the left. This standing wave is one wavelength long. Once again, the standing wave you see is created when the wave created by the student on the right meets with the wave that reflects off the hand of the teacher on the left. This standing wave is one and a half wavelengths long. It contains three antinodes and four nodes. This standing wave contains three antinodes and four nodes. Be careful that you don't forget to count the nodes at the end of the standing wave. Because the standing wave has a node at each end, we say that, we say that it is a close we say that it is closed at each end. If it had an antinode at the end, we would say that it was open at that end. In this presentation, we will focus on standing waves that are closed at both ends. This standing wave is two wavelengths long. It contains four antinodes and five nodes. There are always one more, there's always one more node than antinode. Before I go any further, I want to review the two major parts of the standing wave. The part of the wave that moves up and down is called the antinode. The antinode is created by constructive interference, and they have the maximum energy. The node is created by destructive interference, and it's the part of the wave that has the minimum or no energy, no energy at all. Here are seven standing waves moving through a string with a length L. The top string is produced when the source vibrates at the fundamental frequency. Each successive standing wave you see is produced by a source that is a whole number multiple of the fundamental frequency. If the funda fundamental frequency is 10 hertz, a standing wave can only be produced with a source vibrating at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, or 70 hertz in this particular length. A standing wave, however, would never be produced in this string with the string this length at 15 hertz. All the waves you see here are closed at both ends. Remember, a standing wave that ends in a node is considered closed, and one that ends with an antinode is considered open. The lowest frequency that makes a standing wave is called the fundamental frequency. The first standing wave shown here is created when the source is vibrating at the fundamental frequency for a given standing wave length. As you can see, the smallest frequency produces the largest wavelength, and the highest frequency creates the smallest wavelength. At this point, I need to sort out the difference between the standing wave length, L, and the wavelength, lambda. Every standing wave shown here has the same standing wave length, but every wave shown here has a different wavelength. The standing wave length is the length of a standing wave, and we will designate this with the letter L. The wavelength is the length of a single wave. The second harmonic shown contains one wave so that the wavelength is equal to L. The top wave is a half a wavelength long, so if L is a half a wavelength, then the wavelength is twice the length of the standing wave, or 2L. If you double the fundamental frequency, a new standing wave will be created that is one wavelength long. So as I said before, the wavelength is equal to the standing wave, the standing wave's length, or L. Now let's look at a standing wave that is produced by a frequency that is three times the fundamental frequency. This is called the third harmonic. The third harmonic produces one and a half wavelengths. When we solve for lambda, we find the wavelength is two-thirds of the standing wave, 
or two-thirds of L. The lowest frequency standing wave that can be produced by a given length is called the fundamental frequency. Since we are discussing standing waves that are closed at both ends, the lowest frequency standing wave would have a node at both ends and an antinode in the middle. Since a standing wave that is one wavelength wide has two antinodes and this standing wave has one, this standing wave must be a half a wavelength long. Since the length of the standing wave is L, then the wavelength of this wave must be 2L. The second harmonic is created by a source that is vibrating with twice the frequency of the fundamental. This standing wave also has twice the number of antinodes. Since it is one wavelength wide, the wavelength is exactly equal to the length of the standing wave, or L. The third harmonic is created by a source that's vibrating with three times the frequency of the fundamental. The standing wave also has three antinodes. Since it's three halves wavelength wide, the wavelength is exactly equal to two-thirds the length of the standing wave. If the length of the standing wave is 12, wave is 12 centimeters, then the wavelength would be 8 centimeters. Take a look at the math. The pattern you saw in the previous example continues. The fourth harmonic is created by a source that is vibrating with four times the frequency of the fundamental. The standing wave also has four times the number of antinodes. Since it is two wavelengths wide, the wavelength is exactly one-half the length of the standing wave. The fifth harmonic is created by a source that, that is vibrating five times the frequency of the fundamental. The standing wave also has five times the number of antinodes. Since it is two and a half wavelengths wide, or five halves wavelengths wide, the wavelength is exactly two-fifths of the length of the standing wave, or tooth wave, or two-fifths L. The length of a standing wave closed at both ends is always a whole number multiple of a half a wavelength. The length of the third harmonic is three halves of a wavelength wide, and the length of the seventh harmonic is seven halves wavelengths wide. You use the velocity and length of the standing wave to find the frequency of any harmonic. Now let's review what you've learned. When a standing wave is closed at both ends, there is a node at the beginning and a node at the end. The fundamental frequency produces a standing wave that has one antinode and is a half a wavelength long. All other frequencies that will produce a standing wave must be a whole number multiple of the fundamental. The third harmonic is, has three antinodes, is three halves wavelength wide, and is generated by a frequency that is three times the fundamental. This is the end of my presentation on standing waves closed at both ends.